Welcome to EPG Patshala. Hello friends, I am Dr. Jayadeep Sharangi, Associate Professor of English, Jogesh Chandra Choudhury College, University of Calcutta, Kolkata. We are into module 32, early drama with special focus on Garbodak, the first English tragedy. In this module, we are going to learn certain things. Number one, we are to learn the trajectory of in English drama during that time. Then the influence of the classical writers like Seneca, Plautus and Terence. We are also going to learn the plays written around that time like Garbodak, Gamma Gatton's Needle and Ralph Royster Doster. We will discuss at length the first English tragedy Garbodak. We will also discuss about the features of Seneca module of tragedy during that time. Friends, let us first discuss about literature as propaganda. The political and potential of literature to influence a large number of people was soon realized by the Tudor monarch. They wanted literature to come out of the strongholds of religion. The effects of the Renaissance soon reached England and it was combined with the forces of reformations. This led to the emergence of a new literature that is secular in nature. There were other social factors that helped in this development or the trajectory of a literature. The economic condition changed leading to the emergence of a new social class who benefited from the monarch and helped in its consolidation. This class was educated according to the principles of humanism that taught them to become good, good statespersons. However, literature cannot only be seen as a tool of propaganda that goes beyond the territory of propaganda. Renesha meant revival of learning. Old masters were read and read with new spirit, translated and reinterpreted in new changed social contexts. This led to the beginnings of new dramatic forms like tragedy and comedy. Now friends, see we are into the emergence of English comedy and tragedy. However, literature cannot only be seen as a tool of propaganda. As we all know, Renesha means revival of learning. Old masters contributed extensively to the growth and prospects of drama in the 16th century. English drama was most influenced by their Latin masters. Though the Greek masters were read and Latin influence was greater as the influence of Italy was immense on English psyche. Renaissance both brought both new content and form to drama. Before the establishment of public theatre, plays were mostly performed in inns and the inns of court. However, drama continued to enjoy royal patronage. I think by the time you have understood what the word phrase royal patronage means. Thus, many plays were enacted in the royal court itself. The universities also staged plays, mostly the Latin originals, because they were the citadels of different kind of colonial and pre-historical contexts. Hello friends. Now let us discuss about tragedy. Tragedy was primarily understood to be read aloud and during the Renaissance when the classics were reread and were taken up to the enacted, the greatest influence on Renaissance tragedy was that of Seneca. Now we should understand a few things about Seneca and tragedy. The first thing that we must talk about the revenge motive which is marked or associated with, in, uh, with uh, Senecan plays, the loving dialogues 
with long conversations. Five act structure. Before that, there was no five act structure as per we understand. An atmosphere of violence and horror. Almost no physical action. The sensationalism and moralizing are two dominant modes of this particular method. The Senecan tragedies were first translated into English by John Haywood. Now, we must discuss at length the first English tragedy called Garbodak, alternatively titled as Forex and Perix. The play was first English tragedy and it was enacted in the year 1561 AD. It was written by Thomas Norton and Thomas Sackville, that is called Sackville and Norton's tragedy. The play was modeled on Senecan tragedy and in the previous uh, phase we discussed about the features of the Senecan tragedy already. Now theme of Garbodak, the plot of the play is taken from the Geoffrey of Monmouth's very important work called Historia Regum Brittany and Grafton's Chronicle. So, it is a combination of both the works. The complexity of the plot arises when King Garbodak decides to divide his realm between his two sons, Forex and Perix. The play shows the importance of monarchy and royal here. Features of Garbodak Long dialogues like the Senecan features, no physical action on stage, extreme violence, there are instances of uh, forticide, regicide, civil war and different activities. The original features, use of blank verse, dumb show at the beginning of each act, no unity of time and place. Now, Arden Feversum, domestic tragedy enacted, published in the year 1592. Authorship is disputed, based on a real life murder story in which the wife kills the husband with the help of her paramour. They both are finally punished. The play reveals the deep psychological evils, inherent human mind. Now, friends, we should discuss at length the development of comedy, because we have had some ideas of the development of tragedy during the early part of the 16th century so far. English comedy was influenced by the works of Latin masters like Plautus and Terence. Terence was favorite of Erasmus who taught the plays of Terence should be taught at the school level or the university students. Most of his plays were enacted in the schools and universities in Latin. Apart from Plautus and Terence, Dantas and the theory of comedy was quite popular during that time. Classical themes and motifs were widely borrowed by the Renaissance playwrights. Now, friends, as we have understood the first tragedy and the features of comedy, now the first comedy ever written in English, that is Ralph Royster Doister. The first comedy English written enacted before 1533 AD, based on the work of Plautus, the playwright Nicholas Adel was a well-known educationist educationist of the time. The plot revolves around the exploits of a boastful soldier. Apart from the characterization, laughter is evoked through the situations and through the lang linguistic appeal of the play. The instance of ambiguity emerging out of the mispunctuation is quite well known. The character of the heroine is quite strongly portrayed in the text. Now, friends, another comedy written during this time, Gamma Garten's Needle. Gamma Garten's Needle is an anonymous play attributed to 
Mr. S is within quote. The plot is Terentian in nature, though there is no direct reference to any classical burrowing so far. The plot revolves around the hilarious situations created out of the loss of Gamma Garten's needle. Though farcical, the play is a parody of the classical motif of finding a lost child. The play created some brilliant characters like Deacon, the Bedlam, who is a forerunner of Shakespeare's Fool, or Dumchurt, and the village gossip, Hedge, and the firm laborer, and so on. So, you can easily Im imagine the importance of the play on the ages to come. To conclude, classical plays provided the basis of future plays. They introduced new genres like tragedy and comedy. Also, the technical aspects like five act structure, the arrangement of action in these five acts, the use of imagery and other features all inspired by the classical plays and the playwrights. Now, if I to, we are to conclude, we are to note how these dramas, early dramas during the period that we have discussed so far have affected and influenced the dramatists to come in generations. We have understood the structural division of five acts and the implications of imagery, the motif of revenge, bloodshed, horror on theatre really made an impact on the days to come. So, as a whole this particular phase of drama with special reference to God Bodak and the appearance of Ralph Roster Dyster, English tragedy and comedy looked different. They have a different dress now and they have announced their arrival in the world literary scenario. Friends, you should not forget that apart from this discussion, you should also read a few texts. To include in the reading list, F. S. Boas, University Drama in the Tutor Age, Oxford University Pace, uh, Press Publication, M. C. Bradbrook, The Growth and Structure of Elizabethan Comedy, Compton Rickett, A History of English Literature from Earliest Times to 1916, Peter Happy, English Drama Before Shakespeare, Clifford Leach, et al. The Revels History of Drama in English, Volume 2, Jessica Winston, Seneca in Early Elizabethan England, Renaissance Quarterly, Volume 59, and so on. Thank you. My kingdom has been stolen from me by my mortal enemy. My father is dead. My son, avenge me! I have been murdered! Avenge me and take what is yours. No, no, he holds my betrothed captive. Any move I make, he would kill her. Do not hesitate. Avenge me, avenge me. Have you considered my offer? The king and your beloved prince is dead. I have taken control of the kingdom. With you by my side, we can rule this realm together. Stop 
find you because of his dog's vomit. <laughs> oh, my princess, tomorrow there shall be a wedding, and you shall be my bride, whether you like it or not. You can come by your own free will, or I will drag you there myself in chains. I will never marry you! Oh, 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 oh. We shall see about that, my princess. Have a lovely evening. Oh, 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 oh. All is lost, and my throat is dead. I should rather die than marry that treacherous snake. It's so bad. If death is the only door to freedom, then I shall take it. What? My love is dead! The traitor shall face the devil in the hottest part of hell ere this day ends! <laughs> the kingdom is now mine! <laughs> the prince is dead! <laughs> And the princess <laughs> is not so you think, vile traitor. You! Today, by my father's sword, I will slay thee. No. Ah. Rest easy, my heart. Today, I shall follow thee to heaven, or I shall dwell in hell. <laughs>